Hello from the Fortronics YouTube channel. Welcome to electrical signal routing with mechanical relays. And this is part two in a two part series. And as I mentioned in part one, after this series, I'll be doing one on electrical signal routing with solid state switches. Before I get started, I'll mention, check me out on Patreon. There'll be some exclusive Patreon content from this video series, as well as the next, which I'll talk about. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Forstronics YouTube channel. And if you like what you see here, please hit the thumbs up. All right, let's get started. Okay, so in part one, I talked about the two different series. I also did a pros and cons of mechanical relays and solid state switches. So in this video, we're just gonna be focusing on mechanical relays. And what I'm gonna be talking about is some important design notes related to mechanical relays namely armature relays and read relays. If you remember in part one, I went over a diagram of how those relays are put together and how to actuate them. And so in this series, I'm gonna talk about a simple circuit for controlling armature and read relays, right? Because how do we actuate one of these relays? We send current through the coil. How do we switch them on and off or to different states? Well, we need to be able to control that current through the coil and so we'll look at a circuit that can do that, a very simple circuit that also includes flyback protection. Then we'll look at another circuit that allows us to use mechanical switches, but to prevent hot switching. So let me better explain that. So we talked about what hot, hot switching is. So sometimes you have a situation where you have a signal, a power signal that you need to switch and let's say you need mechanical relays because you need that air gap when you're, when you're switching that signal but you would like to avoid hot switching because it you know, reduces the life of your mechanical switches. So we'll look at a way to get the best of both worlds, to be able to control a always on signal with mechanical switches, but to avoid hot switching. For my Patreon subscribers, we're gonna look at a design that has mechanical relays as well as solid state switches that we can control wirelessly with a simple ESP32 microcontroller. Let's talk about actuating armature and read relays. It'd be nice if we could just control them with a digital pin from a microprocessor or microcontroller, but unfortunately a digital pin like that is not gonna have enough current to get through the coil and actually actuate the switch. So how do we switch power on and off to our coil so we can switch our mechanical relay? Well, there's a simple circuit to do that, but just before we get into that, let me give you some examples of armature and a, and a read relay. So I provide two different model numbers, and we'll see these model numbers in a demo video in a little bit. But the RZ03 is a Form A mechanical relay. So Form A, once again, means single pull, single throw, normally open. It has a 12-volt coil, or at least the one we're going to show has a 12-volt coil, and can handle up to 16 amps of current. Now, as I mentioned in part one, often these same model numbers will have different voltage ratings for coils to better suit your design. But the thing you always have to keep in mind is the lower the voltage, the more current. So I'm showing an example with an armature relay at 12 volts. To actuate this relay, it's gonna take about 33.4 milliamps, nominally, right? It's not, these coil resistance aren't exact. So once again, 33.4 milliamps is too much current for a microprocessor or microcontroller pin to put out. Then here's an example of a read relay, also a Form A relay that can handle 200 volts and 500 milliamps. And like I said before, read relays, smaller, they're faster, less power to actuate them, but they typically have lower power handling compared to an armature relay. So for this example, we're gonna use the 12 volt version. It has a higher coil resistance, so more coil turns. It only requires 10 milliamps. Same thing for the five volt version. So 10 milliamps is much lower, but it's still typically too high of current to control with a pin, a five volt pin, a 3.3 volt pin. So we'll look at a circuit that we can implement that allow us to control these relays. And the same circuit could be used for armature or read relays. One last thing I'll mention is mechanical relays often have an operating voltage spec versus its actuating voltage spec. So I'm using the same armature relay that I talked about above here. So to actuate it, we need 12 volts if we have the 12 volt model, and we need at least 33.4 milliamps. But let's say you have a power sensitive design. 
Well, relays provide a spec that says, well, once you actuate the relay, if you just need to hold it where it is, you can actually lower the voltage, which in turn lowers the current flowing through the coil to keep it in place. So the idea is if I had to keep this relay in place for hours and I wanted to use a lower power, I would actuate it with 12 volts and the max coil current and then lower that voltage to lower the power draw to keep that relay in place. Okay, so let's look at a circuit that allows us to control these relays with a simple digital logic pin from a microcontroller. Okay, so here's a simple circuit to control current flow through a coil of an armature or reed relay so we can actuate it. We can turn it on or off or open or closed or closed or open. Now what we're gonna use in this is an N-channel MOSFET. So this is essentially we're using a solid state switch to control a mechanical switch. So an N-channel MOSFET, and we'll talk about more MOSFETs in the next series, but an N-channel MOSFET is typically a low side MOSFET when you use it as a switch or a low side switch. And the reason is, is because to close it, so it has a very low resistance and acts like a short, like a closed switch, we need the gate, which is right here, pin one, to be at a higher voltage than the source. And that's why we have the source tied to ground. Now, what is that higher voltage? Well, that's in the specs of the MOSFET, but you can easily find MOSFETs where if we're using a 3.3 volt logic or five volt logic, it'll actuate or close this MOSFET switch. And that's what this DIG control is. So this would connect to a digital pin output. So when it's low, this, this end channel MOSFET acts like an open, and when it's high, it acts like a closed or shorted switch. R20 just serves as a current limiting resistor. R21 is just meant to be a pull down on the gate. So let's say we turn our circuit on. We don't want like a floating voltage to accidentally turn this MOSFET to a state we don't want it in. So we have this pull down resistor. Up here we have our 12 volt power supply for actuating our 12 volt coil relays, right? And it could be different voltages, but we're using 12 volts. This is where the coil of the relay connects between relay power one and relay power two. So here's our relay, our schematic representation of a relay. Here's the coil, and here's the relay itself. So what happens is if we apply a 3.3 volt logic to this gate, this is tied to ground, this MOSFET acts as a short. That allows this 12 volts to, to force current through the coil, actuating the relay. And then it gives it a path to ground for a complete circuit. When we're done and we want to shut off current flowing through the coil, we just bring this to a low. Now our gate is at the same potential as the source of our N-channel MOSFET, and it will turn off or act like an open switch. Now once that happens, remember, this coil is like an inductor. So we turn it on, current's flowing, our switch actuates, we're done with it, we turn it off, well, guess what? This coil has a magnetic field in the form of energy stored there. So once this opens, that energy that's stored, that power needs a place to go. And we saw in part one that that can lead to a flyback voltage. So what happens is when we turn off the switch or open it, this basically creates a reverse potential where this side of the coil is more negative than this side of the coil. So we get a higher voltage value here, and this snubber diode or flyback diode will forward bias if that voltage gets above 12 volts and allows that power to dissipate to the power supply, preventing that flyback spike of voltage. So here it is, this simple circuit, four components that we can use to control an armature relay or a reed relay. So let's look at a video where we see this circuit in action. Okay, here's a prototype switch design I had for testing instrument grade power supplies. And so what we have here is we have two different inputs and we have an input and an output. And the idea is these four screw terminals connect to these four relays. So the black relays are a read relay and the orange relays are an armature relay. And these are the exact model relays that I showed on the first slide. Then we have the same thing on top here. And then so what I have is on one of the screw terminals, I have a wire connected to one end of a DMM and another wire connected to another end of a DMM that's set up to do a continuity measurement. So when we actuate these switches, we'll get a nice path through here. 
And then when we remove the current from the coils, the switches will open and we'll get no current flow. Now I could have a current flowing or a signal through each one of these, but I just have it through this N1, which is these two read relays on the end. So we're gonna be putting our signal through read relays. So we're gonna look at the connection. So one end is connected to one end of the DMM and the other end is connected to the other end. I'm gonna go over here and this is what we're gonna to use to control our relays. So we have a Arduino Uno, two digital pins, because we're gonna control the top relays and the bottom relays. And so the idea, and I don't know if I mentioned this, is we can use that relay control circuit to control more than one relay. So I have it set up on this board so each circuit is actually controlling four relays. The idea here is less components if you need certain relays to actuate at the same time. But here we're able to control four different relays with one control circuit. And here it's showing the connection here on the board. So these are connected to the circuits that are gonna be used to control those relays. This black one is just a ground this red and green is the power supply. So this is our 12 volts that we use to force current through the relay coil when we wanna actuate the relay. So I'm gonna pan up, there's our power supply that's off right now. Here's our DMM, it shows open because our relays are not actuated and they're all form A relays, so they're normally open. So then I'm gonna go back to the board and flip it over because I have the relay control circuits on the bottom. So here's our three simple components. Here's D1. So what we're looking at is the through holes of these different relays, right? So these two in the middle with the big one, big uh, posts are the armature ones, and then these, these on the side are the read relays. So we have D1, which is our flyback, our snubber diode. We have Q1, which is our N-channel MOSFET, our low side solid state switch. R2 is our current limiting resistor, and R3 is our pull down resistor. And if you note, if you can see this PCB trace, this is actually the 12 volt signal, right? So we have it connected to one, two, our two armature relays, and then one read relay, and then the other read relay here. And all we have to do is allow Q1 to provide a path to ground so current flows through those coils and they actuate, all four at the same time. All you have to do if you're controlling multiple relays is just make sure your MOSFET can handle the combined current flow of all four of these relays. So there's the one closest to us for those set of relays, and then we have another circuit for the other four relays. And so what I did is on the Arduino Uno, I just have a simple program that pulls the two pins high for two seconds and then pulls them low for two seconds. So we're actuating the relays for two seconds, closing them, so it creates a path for our DMM continuity check, and then they open again. So I'm gonna put the board down and I'm gonna turn on the power supply. So now we have our 12 volts to the coil. Our relays are actuating and we can see that up here. Open, now closed. Open, now closed. So that's our circuits. We're controlling them with simple digital pins from an Arduino board. And this allows us to control the higher voltage and higher current that's gonna flow through the coils as well as deal with the flyback. You can use a circuit on one relay or you can use it on multiple relays as long as you size the components correctly to handle the current. Okay, now let's look at a way we can prevent hot switching when we're using mechanical relays, but we have a constant signal that's going to these relays. And remember, hot switching is when you actuate the relay, either close it or open it, when there's power applied to the path. And what happens is when that relay contact is almost closed or first starts to open, you get arcs. And that arcs can wear down the relay contact points until they break and cause the relay to have a shorter life if you weren't hot switching. Also, it increases the resistance of the contacts over time when you do hot switching. So here we're looking at a schematic sheet for my EagleCAD software. And this actually is gonna be in the Forstronics wireless switchboard that I'm gonna have on Patreon. So this is actually from that design. But I have three armature relays. They're smaller than the ones we saw in the video. They're five amps, 30 volts is what they can handle. They're single pole, single throw, form A. 
And so on the tops, you have the coils, right? So these are all the same. And you have VCC, which is 12 volts, this SW1 drive, SW2 drive, and SW3 drive, those connect to the circuits we just looked at. So that will connect to that drain of that N-channel MOSFET that we just showed. And then we have our actual signal path, right? And the signal path is totally isolated from the coils. So I have this in a MUX configuration. So I have it so there's a common bus. So if, if the words are the same, that means they're all connected to the same node. So COM bus, COM bus, COM bus, all three of these relays their COM bus is connected to the same node or same trace on the PCB. So if we always have a signal that's applied to this, whenever these switch, they'll hot switch. And then we have the output for each switch. So switch one's output, switch two's output, switch three's out. So if we have a signal that's always applied, we're gonna get hot switching, whether we're opening or closing the switch. If we wanna avoid that, what we can do is add a solid state switch. Solid state switches, because they're semiconductor material, there's not actually parts that are moving, right? Uh, that's one of the benefits or one of the disadvantages of solid state switches. So let's say we have an application where we want that air gap. We don't want any type of current leaking out anywhere, but we have a signal that's always applied. Well, here Q6 is a higher power P-channel MOSFET. It can handle up to 6.5 amps, right? So it's size to handle the five amps that these relays can, can handle. And the idea is, if you have the signal that's always on coming in on this bus, the SS or solid state COM bus, you can actually isolate it from the COM bus, the signal, when you wanna change one of these switch positions, right? And I can go over, I'll go over in the next series more about how to handle a P-channel MOSFET, but the idea here is with a P-channel, we want the gate to be more negative than the source to close our switch and we want it to be equal or less negative or more positive than the source to open our switch, right? And so I have these resistors set up to create a divider network to get the right gate voltage. And I have an N-channel MOSFET set up just like I did in the previous circuit to create that path to ground. And power control can be a microcontrol pin. Now, why am I using this N-channel MOSFET here? And I'll go into more of this in the next series, but the idea is I can't connect here because the voltage is gonna be too high. I can't really control that with my microcontroller. So I'm using an N channel to control my P channel. So let's take a situation. Let's say we have K1 closed, these are open, and we have power flowing from the COM bus drive, let's say it's five amps, to the switch one output. But let's say we want to open that. We want to stop power flowing. Maybe we're powering a motor or a solenoid or something like that, but we want to shut it off. Well, if we open this switch, we'll get hot switching, right? We'll get arcing when the paddles, the contacts first start to separate. Well, how do we, how do we prevent that? Well, easy. This P channel, Q6, is going to already be acting like a short. All we have to do is turn this low the end channel acts like an open. You don't get the right bias for the P channel. The P channel then opens, cutting off our always on signal. So now we don't have any current that's flowing through K1. Now we can actuate K1 to the position we want. Maybe we actuate another one of these switches and then we close Q6 again. So that's how we can combine solid state switching with, with armature relays to basically create a situation where we don't have hot switching. We sort of get the best of both worlds. Okay, that's it for part two of electrical signal routing with mechanical relays. As I mentioned, I'll be doing a series on solid state switching next. If you have anything to add, please use the comment section below. If you have any questions from the video, please use the comment section below. And when I come out with the solid states series, that's when I'll start having some of the exclusive content for the Forstronics wireless switch design on Patreon. So, so stay tuned for the next series and thank you for watching.